Well, it's finally over. We've been leading up for this moment for over a year. Finally, iPhone 10, iPhone 8, and 8 Plus are finally out. Yes, it's not X, it's iPhone 10. They clarified that for us, and it's Apple Watch Series 3. Apple finally said the number three, thank God. Okay, that, that wasn't a wild card. And also the Apple TV 4K. So going into this video, all I really want to do is hover everything they talked about in a short amount of time, and then throwing in my two cents on the matter. So first off, basically 80% of the leaks we knew about turned out being correct. First thing they wanted to talk about was the new Steve Jobs Theater, which is really cool. They paid a lot of homage to Steve Jobs. They showed off that they're gonna do this new today at Apple thing where the Apple store is basically turned into a college campus, which is neat. But I don't, I don't, I don't live by one, so it's not a big deal for me. After that, instead of talking about the Apple TV first, they actually dove straight into the new Apple Watch. The Series 3 has this red dot, and that signifies that it is the cellular option. I don't know if it actually hardware-wise has to do anything with the cellular, because they said the antenna bands for the Apple Watch are embedded within the display, which is actually really cool. Design-wise, it's the same size and same shape as an Apple Watch Series 2. And to get the 38, the cheapest one, the 38 millimeter Apple Watch Series 3 with cellular, it's only $400. The 42 millimeter version is $430. And the non-cellular version, 38 millimeter is $330. So things are getting a lot cheaper. And then of course the Series 1 is actually still here now starting at $250. And the Series 2 is just gone. There's no more Series 2. The Series 3 has simply replaced it. And you'll of course be able to pre-order that Apple Watch this Friday. They brought in a couple new band options, like a sport band that is a loop. So it kind of looks like nylon, but it also looks like it's kind of stretchy. So lots of new watch bands. One surprising thing you'll see gone is the rose gold Apple Watch. They kind of mixed rose gold and gold for this new gold finish. But for the most part, rose gold for the Series 3 is not present. And for those wondering what they were going to do for the addition, the Series 3 still has the ceramic white version, except now, of course, with the cellular connection and the red dot. But it also is accompanied by a space gray ceramic version, which looks really cool. So now you've got two colors for the ceramic, and of course, they are very premium priced. Sadly, we didn't see any functional watch bands or mention of the glucose monitoring. Apparently, that was all watch OS 4 talk. That was not actual hardware talk. And the primary new thing about the new Apple Watch is just the LTE, which you can make phone calls on, you can stream music on, you can make texts on. It does not have a SIM tray. You don't have to pop anything out. It just syncs with whatever phone number your iPhone has. And the data plans have not really been announced yet. You have to contact your carriers. But it seems like there's a lot of cellular carriers, even ones overseas that still support the Series 3 on launch day, which is kind of cool because we thought it would only be available in the US, but it's available for a whole lot of people. And again, the leaks were saying that there could be a free time zone, like the first three months you have your LTE watch, it doesn't charge you anything, and then it starts charging. I kind of hope it just tethers onto your iPhone's data plan, and the data you use on your watch is just counted as data you use on your phone, but I don't know, we'll see. It's also equipped with the new W2 chip, which they very briefly glanced over. I'm assuming this is using the same kind of technologies as Bluetooth 5.0, which is really great because I was hoping they were going to refresh it. Of course, new faster processor chips and internal upgrades on the Series 3 as well. Like for instance, when you talk to Siri, Siri will talk back to you through the speaker. She didn't do that before. Now, of course, with LTE, you can access Siri anywhere. But first of all, I'm just very impressed that they were able to keep the prices lower on these LTE versions. Very happy to see that they didn't skyrocket out of control. So moving on to the 4K Apple TV, it was pretty much everything we expected. It has 4K support. Design-wise, there's barely any differences, but the box itself no longer has a USB-C port on the back, which was an interesting move. And also the new Apple TV remote has a white circle around the menu option. And I think what that's supposed to do is when it's dark at night, you're not sure which button is the menu button that should help give orientation to it. So that's a difference. So 4K HDR on the new Apple TV 4K, and it only costs $180. It has the new A10X Fusion chip, so it's a lot faster. The games they showed on it look great, like almost better than the Nintendo Switch, to be honest. So this is approaching full-fledged console area, and they didn't even break the $200 price point. So I'll definitely be getting both the Apple Watch Series 3 and the 4K Apple TV. Of course, bumped up with all new specs as well. So everything is fast and current. Then they started moving into the official new 2017 iPhone lineup. And they started with the iPhone 8 and 8 Plus. Yes, that name that was so popular was not talking about the fancy iPhone, the one I got back here. These iPhones really should have been called the 7 and 7S because they look so similar, but they're packed full of new features. So I think it's worth mentioning that if this was an S up 
upgrade, which it's not, it would still be quite a massive one because we're switching to glass backs. We've got new color options. They're bringing back space gray. We have improved cameras with now smart tonal monitoring. So portrait mode now looks really good. It works faster. We got Bluetooth 5.0. Finally, we have true tone displays on these new iPhones, which before we've only had on iPads. And of course, the star of the show, the main thing I'm most excited for, both the iPhone 8 and 8 Plus rear facing cameras can record 4K at 60 frames a second. You guys realize how rare that is? That has not been done on a smartphone before. In fact, on consumer grade cameras, that is very hard to find. The cheapest one is like the Lumix GH5. That's like over $2,000 to get something that can record 4K video at 60 frames a second. Now this phone that starts at $700, so it's not even the craziest, most expensive phone out there, blows every other camera out of the water because it could do 4K at 60. I'm so happy about that. Of course, with the glass backs, they introduced that this supports wireless charging, which works with a lot of the pre-existing wireless chargers that are out there. So the one Starbucks has put in their restaurants, you can just place your iPhone 8 or 8 Plus on. No problem. And they come in two storage configurations, 64 gigs and 256. We do find it a little bit limiting that there's not as many color options as the iPhone 7 lineup. You know, we had jet black, black, silver, gold, rose gold, and then red. Where this one, we only have the three. We once again see that rose gold is gone, even though that the one they showed in the video, it looked very rose gold, but it seems like they're just kind of partnering the gold and rose gold colors together. So they're not that much different, but I think that helps with manufacturing so that they can get enough of these out on time. And those, along with the 4K Apple TV, will be available for pre-order this Friday, then delivery starting a week later on the 22nd. So for me, the most exciting features are the improved cameras. 4K 60 is amazing to me that these smartphones can do that. And I'm really grateful they implemented Bluetooth 5.0. I'm so happy. I was worried they weren't going to do that, but they did. They didn't put Bluetooth 5.0 in the iMac Pro, which is a $5,000 desktop. So why are they putting it in a $700 smartphone? I, I don't know. But that's really cool. And then, of course, we got into the main attraction. They're calling it the iPhone 10. And the iPhone 10 is spelt with a Roman numeral X. So we have two phones coming out now, the 8 and the 10. So will there be a 9? I don't know. I don't know. I really don't. This is definitely going to be a mixed bag for most people out there. In fact, I'm pretty sure I'm going to have to be defending this iPhone a lot. So from the start, people are going to be upset that there's no headphone jack because we never got over that last year. There's a bunch of leaks that people got excited about that ended up not being true and they don't bother me but I can understand why they may bother a lot of the fan base. So for one there was no 512 gigabyte option. A lot of people thought there would be but there isn't. There is not even a virtual home button so those rumors about the home bar at the bottom were all true about swiping up to go home and swiping up and holding a little bit to access multitasking. One thing we didn't see coming is that control center is now accessed by pulling down on the right ear around the notch. We're still not really sure how you access notification center. They didn't cover that but the display does look incredible. It's cool to see it directly from Apple and not be a concept anymore. Of course, it supports Bluetooth 5.0. And on the iPhone 10, both cameras on the back have dual optical image stabilization. So it's no longer just the Galaxy Note 8. They can no longer brag that. And one thing the Note 8 can't brag about is the 4K at 60 option. The iPhone 10 camera has better low light performance than the 8 Plus. And I don't believe the 8 Plus has dual optical image stabilization. It might, maybe I missed that, but it sounds like it doesn't based on the most recent keynote. I gotta stop myself from saying most recent leak because I feel like I've been saying that for the past year. Now it's finally official. A couple things that people might be upset about with the iPhone 10 is what's included with it. Like I said, I told you don't expect AirPods to be included. I was right. These come with lightning headphones and an audio jack adapter, which I thought was fair because these are expensive. They're high in demand. I thought it was a little bit unreasonable to say that you have to include AirPods with every purchase of the iPhone 10. That's a little ambitious. But what does upset me is the charger cable. They are not including a lightning to USB C cable with the purchase. I don't know why they're still sticking around with the lightning to USB A and it's going to come with, you know, the standard five watt charge brick. I thought we were going to get a lightning 2.0, you know, the faster charging or a charge brick with USB C so battery could charge faster and we're not getting that. So I think that what's included with the package is going to upset people a little bit. But to be honest, we really do have the leaks to blame for that. I've predicted it many, many times, but I always said that no matter what comes out, no matter what Apple introduces, people are going to be disappointed. And I was right. There's plenty of leaks that told people this would be more than it actually is, like including AirPods or 512 gigs of storage, 4K at 60 on the front and back. I don't know why anyone ever believed that. And there's also no blush gold option. A lot of people thought there would be some kind of copper color. That turned out to be just for the 8 and 8 Plus. There is only two color configurations with this, white and black. However, I'm just grateful there are no white bezels. The silver one, as the proper name is, silver and space gray. Also, space gray is back. Even the silver one does not have white bezels, which I really appreciate. Aesthetically, that looks so much better. They showed off 
Face ID and how useful it'll be. And I think we really won't know how good Face ID is until we actually get our hands on this, which sadly, yes, the iPhone 10 is delayed. Pre-orders don't start until the end of October and deliveries don't start until early November. But I'm personally okay with that because it means that I have the next week and the week after that to focus on reviewing the new Apple Watch and the iPhone 8 Plus because while it's not the coolest iPhone they unveiled that has all the new bells and whistles, it still is a very advanced iPhone and it's the more affordable one. So a lot of people out there, I'm sure, are curious if it's worth the money. They moved a lot of the home button's features onto the big elongated power button. For instance, holding that button now activates Siri instead of shutting down the phone. And double tapping it is how you access Apple Pay. And all you have to do for Apple Pay now is look at your phone. That's really slick. I can't wait to set that up because my fingerprints have never worked before. So I have a predetermined bias against using Touch ID. And the 64 gigabyte standard model comes in at $1,000. And that's probably going to be the biggest complaint people have with the new iPhone is how insanely expensive it is. We know Apple products that are expensive since when? But personally, I was anticipating it to cost more. I had my bank account set aside for the iPhone 10 to cost $1,200 to $1,400. That's what I thought it would be. And the fact that it's a thousand, I'm actually grateful for. And I know all you people in different countries because of the import tariffs and taxes, the iPhone is crazy expensive. I saw during the live stream, people were saying it's $1,700 in your country. I'm sorry, that sucks. No matter how bad it is though, I still have to admit, I thought it was going to be worse. My expectations were met. I think we got a perfectly decent upgrade. One thing I was a little bothered by was the IP67 water resistance against all of these phones. I was really hoping we'd get that bump up to IP68 so I could feel more comfortable with taking this in a pool or a shower. But nope, iPhone 8, 8 Plus, and 10 all have the same IP67 as the iPhone 7. But if you did see the water test on the iPhone 7, it does hold up pretty well. And yes, it is an IP67 resistance, but it's a high-end 67. Like, I think this could cross into 68 if we wanted it to. People can completely submerge the 7 Plus in water, and it typically lasts perfectly fine afterwards. They said the stereo speakers on both the 8 and 8 Plus are louder, and I'm assuming that goes for the 10, but they didn't mention it. And the most exciting thing about this whole keynote that wasn't leaked is something that's not actually going to be coming out for a while, but I'm still pumped about it because I've given this pitch to Apple many times, is Apple Air Power. Yes, they are finally incorporating the name Air back into the name. You know, we've, uh, you know, we've ditched the iPad Air and the MacBook Air feels like it's going to get discontinued any second. But Air Power is a wireless charging pad that you can put your iPhone on, your Apple Watch 3 on, and your new generation of AirPods. They didn't talk much about it. And my friend Xander's saying it's mostly just a charging case upgrade. It's not necessarily an AirPods itself upgrade. I don't know if it's getting the W2 chip, though I certainly hope it is. But I just love the idea of a single charging pad that you can place everything onto. Just phone, watch, AirPods. It charges it all. You don't have to have cables anymore. They're finally tackling that. And I'm sad that it's not coming out till next year, 2018. But still, I'm interested in buying the Series 3, the new AirPods, and the new iPhone just so I can have that. Because I can't tell you how many times I have to carry around these lightning cables. Having a wireless charging pad that you can just rest things on. That's what wireless charging is meant to be. And it's honestly embarrassing that Samsung hasn't come up with something like that yet. Their charging pads have been around for a while, like Samsung pioneered the wireless charging industry, but still only works on one phone at a time. Whereas Apple's is going to charge three devices at once, maybe even more. Maybe you can put multiple AirPods or multiple Apple Watches on it. I'd like to try it out. Again, I'm sure there's things I've missed, but that's the basics of it. And like I said, a lot of people are probably gonna be disappointed because there was a lot of things that the leaks led us to believe would be bigger deals that turned out to be not as big a deal. So I'm sure there's tons of disappointment out there, but for me personally, I'm fine with this. I don't let my expectations go out of control. iOS 11 is coming out officially this Friday. Watch OS 4 is as well. So I'm excited to get the software official out of beta. I'm really excited for that. And overall, I just think this was a very satisfying keynote. It may not have been for you, but I am. I'll be reviewing the iPhone 8 Plus as soon as I can, as well as the Apple Watch Series 3 and the 4K Apple TV. Oh my God. I'm going to be so poor after this. Right after I got a new place, I'll probably have to move out of here and start filming out of a cardboard box. That's fine. Apple products are shiny. That's all that matters. Let me know your thoughts on the keynote in the comments below. This is your Apple Sheep here, and I will see you in the next one.